how would you like to introduce yourself? How do you want to be known to the people in Nairobi? Perhaps we could start with you? Is that a difficult question? Ladies first? <laughs> Hafsa, what do you say? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm Hafsa. I, <laughs> how, is, how do I want to introduce myself? I mean, I guess, I, I, was, I was told I say this a lot, I'm half Pakistani, half Nigerian, so that's probably the defining characteristic, characteristic of me, um, and I'm British, and I am a daily novelist and a lawyer, which you may have gleaned from uh, the excerpt that was read out um, a, little, a little while ago, that's not too distinct from my day-to-day -day life. But yeah, that's me. Quite sad. sad. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of things happened. It is not there is not the right place to do to do about it. But uh, I said at the beginning, I was not supposed to write books. I did it for nobody I know and to go with it. Well we're very, very happy that you did that about it. Thank you for sharing that. Naimo, may I ask you to share? Uh, yes, uh, good evening. My name is Naimo. I come from uh, Madagascar. Um, I'm uh, mainly a novelist. I write uh, short stories as well. Uh, to follow uh, my friend, July, uh, how did I come to, um, to, to literature? Uh, actually, I was trained as a mathematician. Uh, that, that was a time when, uh, you know, uh, young Africans uh, we were fascinated by science. Science was everything. Then, uh, at one point at, uh, in university, I, I, I was thinking, uh, what am I doing here? <laughs> That's not exactly what I wanted. So, I started digging the history of my own country. Uh, and studying mathematics at the, at the same time. And then I found uh, many things that I've never heard of. And that was something really strange and that I didn't find uh, that it was okay. So um, I think I became a novelist uh, from that moment. Uh, I discovered things that were uh, great and also discovered things that weren't so great uh, because like uh, uh, Christian historiography had uh, uh, completely uh, put them away, uh, like uh, or D 
he was like uh, a way, uh, very harsh way of judging people. In the Pricolon period, I'm writing uh, mostly about the Pricolon period. So yeah, that, that was uh, my main source of inspiration. I uh, was thinking, how come only uh, scholars and uh, people and uh, students at the university can access uh, these stories which are part of our memories of our identity, uh, so-called identity. So that's how I started. And it was a very long process. Uh, it's not like I just started uh, writing a novel uh, two days after that. <laughs> it was a very long process. I, um, I uh, started a uh, career as a Teaching. And then uh, in the end, I managed to, uh, to write a novel uh, and uh, to talk to uh, uh, very interesting people uh, in my own country, to talk to various scholars that uh, uh, were the people who had uh, that, uh, that knowledge and that information. And, uh, and yeah, and that's uh, uh, what I would like to be remembered for, I guess. It's like uh, uh, somebody who would try to to uh, to uh, fictionalize history in a way that uh, people can relate to it. Uh, I think that's the, that's the, I can say. That's really beautiful. Thank you. A mathematician turned novelist. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, see. If you can share with us how you like to be known. Yeah. Um, uh, I think I would like to be um, just seen through my mate, Sylvie Candy, uh, French first name, uh, West African last name. Uh, at some point, some people attempted to uh, wanted to make me believe that there was a tension between the two, uh, that there was a dissonance between the two, and uh, it took me a long while, but I managed to recognize the fallacy in that, and I did that through writing. Um, uh, I'm a writer because I promised to another writer, Edouard Glissant, that I would write. So I believe in uh, mentorship. I believe in intellectual and poetic uh, mentorship. I'm a teacher. Uh, I'm a, and I'm also a mother. Okay? And uh, I certainly hope that my children, while holding their own memories, will also hold the future of mine. And Abdul Razak, how would you like to be known? <coughs> this one? Yeah. yeah, okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for uh, having me here. That's a, actually a much harder question than you think. Uh, the one that says, how would you like to be known? And you know, one of the things I really used to hate when I was a student is the seminar leader who would say, all right, we'll go around the class, and everybody introduce yourself to the rest of them and say who you are. <laughs> and this seems it's inescapable. <laughs> Once again, here you are, having to say something about yourself. Uh, well, my name is Abdul Azad Kuruna. Uh, I'm from Zanzibar. Uh, and for the last many decades, I've been living and working in the UK. Um, in the, during that period, I've also uh, spent a brief spell working in Nigeria. I did it, in case you're interested, I visit my country fairly regularly. Um, but my, uh, my life and my imaginary life is shared between these two countries, one in which I ancestrally came from, and one in which I lived most of my early life. And it makes me feel um, fortunate to to be able to um, feel at home uh, in both those places and in other places, because of course home is often the same thing. 
are quite different. Um, if you've asked people talking about what they need to cry uh, <laughs> as I leave, and when she was talking, I was already crying. Oh. <laughs> Yvonne has that effect. <laughs> I'm shy. I'm just wondering now that we know that you know you're already crying, and some of you perhaps will be. We still are working on it. What is the one thing that you hope this festival will do for you? Because I already know you're going to give us so much. So what is the one thing, the festival, the people, Nairobi? How many of you have been to Nairobi before? How many of you? This is home. Okay, a couple. Others haven't. So what's the one gift we can give to you? There's such lovely people, they have no thoughts of getting anything to Tell us the gift you want so that we can prepare. Are you listening? Yes. The Nairobians are listening. Yes. Go for it, um, To be honest, I already feel like I've received it a little bit, which is the welcome. Um, I obviously I arrived uh, yesterday evening, um, we've had a really packed day today, obviously met all these uh, wonderful people and um, I think the thing for me is because I am, you know, I was born and raised in the UK with sort of um, part, partly African heritage and well, really fully African because my Pakistani mother is was born and raised in Nigeria as well. Um, but, you know, to, to feel that welcome from Africa, Africa is not a country, but from Kenya in, in particular, and, Coming back here after I think six years, I was here six years ago um, for for honeymoon, which was lovely. Um, <laughs> and also the food was really good, and it's still quite good. So I don't know why you said it's bad. Um, but but yeah, so I think it's it's the welcome, it, it's the kind of reception and, and, and that warmth and that friend, friendliness that you get, and, and um, you know, which is something that's not really replicated in a lot of European cities that you go to. Um, and it's nice to just feel like you are coming home, even though it's you know not necessarily your home home. As as was of saying, what is home anyway? Um, so that's for me uh, what 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 I have want to receive and have kind of already received. And I'm really looking forward to the festival, um, mainly just to listen and absorb from all the wonderful talent that, that's here to kind of um, have conversations, to be educated, and to be inspired. So I think for me that's probably the the whole package and I'm feeling quite confident that I'm going to get it. Yeah, you asked me what would we expect to get from Nairobi. Uh, what I was expecting, I'm not really getting it. Yeah. Uh, and what is it? I forgot to tell you, we to so, you know, I am from Guinea now in West Africa. And in our region, there are a lot of things happening right now. Not only in Nigeria, in Boko Haram, or Kadron, or something. Yesterday, I had another, I think mean, it is Sheikh Anand in Burkina uh, Faso. Um, what, what do I mean with that? We are going through tough times. This is very, very disappointing. Africa is killing Africa. The very first century. This is a shame. So we need to do something to stop, to fight this uh, situation. And how can we do it? In my opinion, one of the first things we need to do, and probably the most important, is to educate our people, to make our youth believe. We, we believe, I believe when I was there, that there is a future, a bright future. And this can only be done through um, education, including literature. Let people read books and imagine another country, another Africa, so that they stop killing each other, 
and you know, embrace this challenge of rebuilding you know, our nation. So I'm here to learn from you how this can be achieved. And I start to learn it. I'm learning it. So thank you very much. of 
the confessions of an opium eater, which is a, a classic uh, uh, romantic text. Anyway, so that's the first time. But I've been back now on several times. I guess what I'm trying to say is that living uh, in Zanzibar, Nairobi didn't seem far. Not only because you could get to it easily enough, but also because people were coming and going, people were talking about it. The Kenyan football team is going to play in Zanzibar. You can see how brutal they were. <laughs> <laughs> and you could listen to the radio, radio uh, Kenya radio, or Tanzania, uh, etc. It didn't seem at all far. And each time that I've come, even though it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and I would be lost one minute after I step out of the door, it still doesn't seem far. It still seems like a familiar place. When uh, Anya wrote to me and said, this is 2019, she said, um, the Kona Festival, why don't you come? Go on and I do this. I had at that point already met him once, so I thought, it must be good. <laughs> if these two people, I'm sorry, if you want, it must be good. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, yes, I'd come. And I'm very glad that I did so. Um, not only because um, of the, all the communication I had with Anya, they assured me that these were serious people doing something important. Uh, but also, if I see the, the list of the participants, some of whom I already know, some of whom are new to me, I think that's a good team to be part of. And of course, now I'm meeting you. Although you're all in the dark, so I don't know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> but I will be meeting you over the next few days, and some of you will speak to me, and I will speak to you, and that would be great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's a lovely, lovely thought to carry us into the future of memories. I know we are coming to an end, we're running out of time, but I'm wondering if any of you has just a couple of last words, last words just for tonight, for us to meditate upon as we come to have longer engagements and just really get to know you and you to know us as we um, just bring this session to a close. I love the way Sylvie doesn't look at me when she's not ready, <laughs> so I don't give her the mic. The first uh, thought that comes to my mind is, uh, is the power of the, of the book, the power of the words, uh, that really brings us together from very far away. Um, I'm particularly sensitive to that because my text was uh, originally written in French and uh, it attracted translators. This is not uh, my publishers who asked them to translate my text, but they came to the poem, so the word really brought us together. Today I'm here thanks to uh, the poet, Alexandre Dicao, who translates my uh, epic into English. Uh, so I'm just amazed and fascinated by the power that uh, the, that words have, you know, to uh, um, bring coherence and um, and, uh, and and uh, and also questioning in the world. So uh, so yeah, that's. Well, I just wish you all well, really. I wish for the festival to go really well. It's made a good start, and uh, now you've had uh, some interruptions to the, the the growth and development of the festival because of COVID and so on. But now I hope things really, really pick up and go on from strength to strength. Thank you. South Asians from East Africa at all until, until I met my husband who is the Ugandan South Asian. So 
Um, even though I have you know, family that live in South Africa, Asian family that live in South Africa, Asian family that obviously live in West Africa, I didn't know about this. And I think that's obviously a part of the kind of, you know, we can talk about decolonization of curriculum or whatever, but I was born and raised in the UK. And I didn't even, I wasn't taught anything about, you know, the empire, major parts of the empire, the British empire, um, until I came across it you know, in, in, in English classes, not in history classes. And so, um, I don't know, I mean, I, the first thing I read that kind of taught me anything about this, which was a text we were required to read, was Heart of Darkness, which obviously <laughs> isn't, isn't a text that you would necessarily, you know, choose to be your foremost education on, um, you know, uh, Belgium and the Congo, but it did inspire me to go and read more about it and to read around it. Um, and if, if I hadn't had the English classes, um, who knows what I would have learned about this? I mean, that was that was for A level literature, English literature, um, and so yeah, I just I just wanted to echo what Sylvie said. Like, it's such an important tool of education in the context of us all being Africans and being here and echoing a lot of the things that were said earlier on today already. Um, you know, we all need to learn more about each other and each other each other all, all of these s smaller jurisdictions and separate jurisdictions within Africa. Um, because it's, it's incredibly important to help educate us about the present as well. Um, so yeah, that's, that's my closing word. I would like to say many things. Um, I want to, to thank the organizers of, the, of this festival for the opportunity they gave us this morning to visit some libraries. It was very inspiring. And so uh, I wish I could have the same thing in my country. And believe it or not, this is one of the best lessons I got so far. <laughs> <laughs>